What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the show. Today's topic is top five ACDC songs. I'm Aaron Action. I'm Jack Knowski. And I'm Johnny Skulls. Today, we have a very special guest from Charlotte, North Carolina, founder and lead guitar player from Prowess, Scott Roby. Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, man. Thank you guys for having me. I'm pumped for the, uh, for the episode. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, so, um, you guys got anything new coming out? Yeah, we're actually working on our follow-up. We, we actually we put out our debut record, uh, Blacktop Therapy, um, in 2020, and it was like a month before COVID shut everything down. Um, and so that kind of put us behind. We weren't able to tour it and everything, but uh, we're working on our follow-up right now. And um, there's an ACDC connection uh, with the new recordings that we're doing, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Awesome. All right. So you um you guys can be around um around Columbus, Ohio anytime or too early to tell yet or um we we have been taking it pretty slow while we're getting uh getting work done on the record, but we're actually recording in Columbus. So uh we're recording at uh Sonic Lounge Studios. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's like uh Grove City, I think it's just a little outside of Columbus. Oh yeah, yeah, we're right where we live. Awesome. That sounds good. All right, um, you want to start off with your number five ACDC song? Yeah, man, how are we doing it? Five down to one or one? Five down to five? one, yeah. Then we'll do honorable down mentions. Number five is going to be Overdose off of uh, the Let There Be Rock album. Um, I just always felt like that one was a killer rock and roll tune. Awesome guitar, so a lot of flavor. Um, kind of under the radar ACDC song, if you will, I guess. Um, but Overdose is just one of my favorites, man. Oh, that's awesome. All right, John, what'd you have for number five? Uh, my number five was um, Love Song. It's a bootleg author, um, 1975 High Voltage. Um, it's kind of weird because that song right there, uh, they don't know whether or not it was a song that he wrote for someone or if it was just a parody song that he decided to. And the thing is, Angus Young ain't the one who's playing lead guitar. It was Malcolm who was um, playing lead guitar on that song. Awesome. It's like their only ballad song that they even got. Well, they got another ballad, which is on one of them, and my honorable mentions was I'll get to. But Trex, what'd you have for number five? Okay, I had one that will probably give me a lot of flack because it's like one of their least favorite songs, but Peace Seeker. I love you. I like that one. Yeah, that's not I bad. love the video. That's what I like about it was the video. Yeah. But I know a lot of true ACDC fans hate that song. Yeah, that's not bad. All right, I had for number five, this might be kind of a surprise, but Who Made Who? Ooh, from that the, is a good song. From the soundtrack that's, of Stephen King, Maximum Mode Drive, 1986. Like, I don't know. I always, that was one of my favorite Bond, or, um, Brian Johnson ACDC songs, man. Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, just a soundtrack, but. I right, Scott, yeah, what'd you have for number four? Or do you or you got a comment on that? Go ahead. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. Um I when I was younger, I, I actually lived with my grandma for a while and uh she was a wild woman. She really wasn't all there, but uh kick anybody else off, I'm guessing, huh? No. Nope. Uh, we're all here. She just, she just bumped me right out. Anyway, <laughs> long story short with that is uh I remember whenever we were watching the Who Made Who movie. Um, like I said, I was just a young kid. And, uh, man, when Who Made Who came on in the beginning of that movie, I mean, I, I, my, I, I wasn't, I was just fresh out of diapers. I was, I, mean, I couldn't have been more than three years old, I guess. And, uh, man, I think I sprouted wood when I heard that <laughs> coming through. You know, it was back in, back in the day whenever they, you know, they, they, they played it loud in the movies. And I was young. That was the first anything like that. And, uh, you know, that just really stuck with the band ever since. Yeah, it's a great song, man. Like, it, um, I mean, even, you know, because ACDC is known for having all their songs sound the same. That one has, has a different sound to, you know, more bass and stuff in it. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's a great song. It's, like, very underrated, in my opinion. All right, Scott, well, what you have for number four? Number four is uh, off the Back in Black record, Shoot the Thrill. That's just a killer song. That's I, I my honorable mention. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a great song. A lot of people hate on that record because, you know, the first one, Brian Johnson, and, oh, that's, you know, it's their popular record. But, man, every song on there is great. I got yeah, I got really one of them. Popular. Yeah, like one of those. Um, I got a song on my list. All right, John, what you have for number four? Uh, number four, Up to My Neck and You. Bootleg is from Powerage, 1977. That's, that's an awesome song. I was listening to it. Yeah, it's pretty good. I never even knew it was even out. Yeah, you're going deep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a good song. All right, Trex, what for number four? I got another Back in Black song, um, Giving a Dog a Bone. That was just a great yeah, song. It I is a enjoyed good one. it. That is a good album. I know. I mean, it's some of the songs are played out, but still, man, like it's still a great record. Every song on it's good. Yeah, because that was the comeback after Bon Scott. So they really like. The story is that he wrote half of them songs on there, but they stole it from him. On. Now there's two of you now. <laughs> you got a doppelganger. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, that was me coming back from the future. <laughs> no, no. Right, right. There you go. All right. Um, my number four, my four. Touch Too Much from Highway to Hell, 1979. That's in Good my song. honorable mention. Yeah, that, that song is pretty awesome. Um, any comments? Oh, yeah, that's that's one of my favorites, man. Yeah, it's a good one. That whole record's good. All right, um, what'd you have for number three? Uh, for number three, I'm going to go with Gone Shooting from Power Ridge. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. He's going deep, too. Mm-hmm. All right, John, what'd you, have for, num- what'd you have for number three? Oh, I had um, Injective Venom from for those about the rock album. 1981. That that song right there is something else. It's basically about you doing wrong. He inject the venom in you. <laughs> I tracks with Jeff for number three. Girl Scout Rhythm, Highway to yeah. Hell, 1979. It's got a great rhythm. And it's got great, like catchy, catchy riffs and great. Great title, Girl Got Rhythm, Backseat <laughs> Rhythm. Yeah. All right, my number three, another song off of Back in Black. Let Me Put My Love Into You. Good song. Yeah, I love that song, man. Well, you don't like that one, Trex? I like it. You know, the thing is with that album, that could have been like our number five all the, all the way through, that whole album. Like yeah, not, I know. I mean, the yeah. only bad song is because they overplay him. Like, it took me all night. Yeah, that's still it's a good overplayed. song. But yeah. Yeah, it is. All right, Scott, with Jeff for number two. All right, there he is. <laughs> Come back from the future again? <laughs> this is me from the past. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My number two song is uh, off the High Voltage album. It is uh, Rock and Roll Singer. Awesome. Nice song. Yeah. Good. All right, John with Jeff for number two. Evil Walks. That's, that's an honorable that's, mention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, they, yeah you, you have them all around you. They walking beside you, behind you, okay. yapping at you. Yeah, that's my favorite <laughs> song off that album. Yeah. All right, Trex, what Jeff for number two? Number two, uh, it's kind of like running the ground, but Dirty Deeds done dirt cheap. 1976, Dirty Deeds. I, I know it's an overrated song, but I always liked it as a kid. Yeah, it's a good song. Yeah, it is kind of I love it. his, the way he sings it. Dirty Deeds, done dirt cheap, just that grunt. Yeah. That was what metal was about, you know. His voice really changed, you know, influenced so many bands because of the style that he sung. All right, my number two, Walk All Over You. Mm. Way to hell. Yeah. Once again, I mean, you see who my one well, of my two favorite records are by them. I would hell and back in black. But it's this great song. Definitely. Yeah, All right, good. Scott, what you have for number one? Number one is uh, also off the Highway to Hell record. It was mentioned earlier, but it is my absolute favorite ACDC song, and that's Girls Got Rhythm. 
Yeah. Oh, great, yeah. Great song. Yeah, it is a good song. It's hard to pick something off that album, though. I mean, the whole thing is, I mean, how would hell it's kind of played out, but all the other stuff, man, it's great. Yeah. Hey, John, what was your number one? My number one? For those about to rock, we salute you. Yeah. So, you know, I'm out on that album. Yeah. That was like one of my favorite albums right there. Yeah, it's a good song. Yeah, and it is. It's, we salute you. <laughs> all right, Trex, what's that for number one? All right, my number one is my favorite, all time favorite album. Um, Girls, or uh, hold on. Can I Sit Next to You from High Voltage? That's my all time favorite album, and that's my all time favorite song. Like, yeah. that album, that album is like the album that I can listen to over and over. All right, my number one, Jailbreak. Number one, Jailbreak. I got that as an honorable man. Yeah, that's a great song, man. Yeah, it is. Like, even the video was fun. I love that guitar riff, man. I, I actually... Uh, I used a similar method on on our song Blacktop Therapy to that record. I could tell by that song because you have the ACDC uh -huh. influence in that song. Yep. Yeah. Um, any honorable mentions? A through Z with cheese. I think the whole left <laughs> side of the menu with onions. <laughs> <laughs> I had a couple. Are you ready? It's a good That's one. A good one. John, um, TNT. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. on mine. I mean, it's played out, but it's still a good song. Yeah, All right. Trex. All right, I gotta go for the Christmas one, Mistress for Christmas. That's like <laughs> Dude, the that's ultimate good... song. That's what I want under my tree. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, since you guys did one, I'll I'll add one, man. I think All right, go I'll ahead. On. Ride on is an honorable mention. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a, good a good song. That was yeah, me too. That's the one I was saying, like the ballad. You know, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. a you great know, song. song I forgot. But I had that. um, I had rock and roll ain't noise pollution. No, yeah. they're back in black. Mm -hmm. I had man, there's one. Yeah, there's so many of them. Yeah. So um, tell us about the new record. You said an ACDC yeah, connection. Uh, absolutely, there is an ACDC connection. Uh, we um, we're moving up the food chain a little bit with this one. It's a it's going to be a bigger a bigger endeavor for us. But we're lucky enough to uh, to have Mike Fraser signed on to the project. And Mike Fraser, of course, is the sound engineer for Razor's Edge. He's got a recorded Thunderstruck. Um, he recorded Thunderstruck. He recorded you know the Razor's Edge. He's done every ACDC album uh, since the Razor's Edge, and he's done you know some some you know he's done big bands like Metallica and Aerosmith, of course, uh, but he, he also does a lot of underground bands. One of his favorite bands right now is a band called The Wild out of Canada. Uh, he records those guys, and uh, like I said, we're fortunate enough to have him signed on to this record, and uh, it's we're pumped, man. It's it's We've been working on it for well over a year, put a lot of time and effort and resources into it. We really want it to be a a killer, a killer record, you know, with a lot of a lot of good catchy songs, a lot of good rough and tumble rock and roll guitar riffs, um, you know. So we hope, hope everybody digs it, man. But if you like ACDC, you ain't gonna be in, you're not gonna be on the wrong track with it. <laughs> I, yeah, I can't wait to hear it. I remember I when, I first, when I first heard you guys, um, you guys played um, in Columbus. It was there was a tree right in the middle of the. You remember that place, yeah. the tree bar? It's called called tree bar. Yep. Yeah. And the uh, the tree is like it encroaches on the stage. It makes the stage only like five feet deep because it's a, like a eight foot wide tree stump right in the middle of the room. And it just you got to play around it. You got to play up on it. I mean, you ain't got no room. You know, it's like when you put the drums back there, you kick drums maybe a foot from that tree stump. So <laughs> I mean, you gotta you just gotta. In incorporated into your set best you can yeah it was crazy it's funny that's the first time i've ever been there um but yeah it was it was a fun show i mean you you guys put on a hell of a show like um okay. now the, the band that opened for us um it was only their second show ever um, yeah 
black coffee. coffee. We know yeah. they got signed, right? Yep. I knew They're called them. South, South of Eden of now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but they, they were a brand new band. And uh, I remember seeing them and thinking, damn, these guys, you know, they really got something special here, man. So it, it was cool to see them get signed. Hopefully, you know, hopefully they start signing a lot of bands like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Need to, yeah, they, need they to were scene really- back. But yeah, then, yeah, then rock and roll scene back. But yeah, then yeah, um, I see you guys at the Shrunken Head. Yeah, uh, remember that? Yeah, that was a good show too. I um, yeah. that was uh, yeah. that was those were two different. I think those were two different lineups. Um, two of the earlier lineups. Um, they're not the not the lineup we have now. Mm-hmm. Um, I I've, I really do feel like the lineup that we have now. Um, is the strongest, the strongest one that we've had. You know, no disrespect to the other lineups. It's just yeah. uh, somebody was always kind of an odd man out or not really a great fit in some regards. But now, I mean, I hope to get in front of you guys so you can come and check it out now because uh, I, I, really the secret of it is Curly, the other guitar player. Um, the other guitar player, Curly Staples that we have, that's just he and I just work together like – you know, it's it's guitar driven rock and roll and kind of like Malcolm and Angus, you know, those guys, those guys are, are, are brothers, you know, so they have very similar rhythm and very similar attack, uh, you know, and it kind of makes like their guitars become one. And, uh, I, you know, I hadn't really experienced anything like that until I had until we got Curly in the band. And now, man, I'm telling you, and then at the addition of the, uh, the newest drummer, Lunchbox, just a really Phil Rudd kind of drummer, but also, you know, he can do, you know, like the uh, the more Leonard Skinner or Thin Lizzy thing as well. So we're, we're open to incorporate all that into the record. Awesome. You still got the same singer? We do have the same singer, but he's grown up a lot since then. You know, he was, uh, when he joined the band, he was 19, I think. Um, you know, so he... he was still a little rough around the edges, but now having gone through the, the uh, process of recording his debut album and he got a lot of coaching from on that record. So it is uh, really come into his own. He's really got his own kind of signature style now. Awesome. I mean, he's a good front man. Like, I mean, a lot, a lot of energy. Yeah. Yeah, like how I discovered you guys when you guys uh, were coming to Columbus. Like on my days off, I'd always just look for shows to go to, and then I uh, seen you guys come and I I watched the No Survivors video, and uh, yeah, I was like, oh, these guys are awesome, man. That's like you know, like seventies rock is good stuff. One thing is, is now for some reason I can't find that video on YouTube. Yeah, we uh, we have a lot of earlier our earlier stuff. Um, the No Survivors, everything off of our first two EPs. Um, was pulled um, as part of the uh, as part of the rollout to the debut. It's kind of like uh, you know, once the record, once the debut album comes out, we're we're kind of an old fashioned band in this regard. We, you know, everybody seems to be leaning more towards singles and more towards EPs these days, mainly mm-hmm. because it's a, it, it costs a lot of money to do a full record. But I mean, we're we want to be an album band, and you know, it takes a little longer that way. But you know, the juice is worth the squeeze. Um, as for our EPs, our EPs and the stuff on them, um, we'll reintroduce them at some point. But, um, you know, it was kind of like our early stuff, uh, as good as it was, was just kind of, you know, the placeholder until we had the album done. And we feel like the album that we put together is a killer rock and roll album. And it hasn't yet gotten any, it hasn't yet gotten the attention it's due because we put it out, you know, a month before everything shut down with COVID and it hasn't even been able to pick up since then. So we, we essentially, we missed out on touring it. We, uh, you know, missed out on our opportunities to, to promote it because there was no money. Um, yeah. But I mean, it, it won a, a whole bunch of awards. It landed on a whole bunch of uh, best albums of uh, 2020 but, um, you know, we just, it hasn't really gotten its day in the sun yet. So we're hoping that when we put out the next one, it'll get us some even, it'll get us some attention from, uh, you know, from a little higher up. And then hopefully that'll bring some, some attention back to Blacktop Therapy. And then at that point, we can, 
put the uh, the EPs back on back online once you know once there's hunger for that stuff right now. That's awesome, man. Trex, John, you guys got anything to asking? Oh, uh, when you when you do your shows, I I haven't had a chance to see you because Aaron, like I said, he always going to shows on days off and usually had to work. And uh, you guys do ACDC songs like in your shit set, don't you? Yeah, we do. We do. We we add in. Uh, we do a lot of covers actually, and a lot of people, you know. Depends on where you play. Some people don't like that. Some people do like that. Um, you know, we play a lot of off the beaten path places, not necessarily music halls like bars. And you yeah. know, we, our, our songs kind of kind of have an old school rock and roll vibe. So we play songs that kind of, you know, kind of mirror the songs that we do a little bit. Like we do covers from Aerosmith, uh, ACDC. Um, we do. Uh, free, we do bad company, we do a whole bunch of old, you know, throwback rock and roll tunes. So these are uh, like your influences? Yeah, we, we like to wear our influences on our sleeves. And, uh, and you know, some people, when we play original, place, original places, they don't like whenever we play covers. But you know what? Sometimes we're doing it for us. You yeah. Know, I like those songs. I See, like playing I like... covers. I like it, you know? Well, like I'm, that first... Not... Like the first show seen you guys said, well, go ahead, tracks. I'm not a fan of like covers on albums, but I like to see them live. Like uh, I love when a band does a cover live, even if they're doing original, like throw one or two in there. That's great mm -hmm. because it's something that, you know, you're familiar with, especially if it's a band you never heard. And like sometimes you want familiarity mm -hmm. to cling on to them. But when they do it as a, on an album, I'm not a fan of that. Well, yeah, it's like no, that. No. That um, tree bar show is like um, that was like one of your earlier shows, you know. Like I think that was around um, the time the EP came out. So you got—I don't mm -hmm. think you had a lot of songs that time. So you did some covers, but you know, but yeah, like I mean, you got to have a full set. So if you don't have all the songs, you know, they, they I mean, it, it was a fun show. I mean, you guys, you guys were great. Thank you, man. Yeah, you know, we, especially we, I, for, I try to take my time. But we try to take our time and do the covers. We we learn them the way they are first before we start fucking with them, you know. Um, Making we, them yours. Yeah, we like to we like to you know beef them up a little bit. The same thing that bands that the bands in the seventies did, like ACDC. You know, when they first started out, they played a lot of covers. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Malcolm and Angus were actually sw swapping leads on a lot of their early in in a lot of their early sets before they had like in the in the uh, can I set next. Can I sit next to you, girl? Face, uh, they, you know, they, they had to fill it up with covers. Then, uh, you know, if I, if you read any books or any interviews about them, you know, they talk about that all the time. They always, they always quip that uh, it didn't really sound like the original when they did them, but um, neither do we. But we learn them that we learn them like the original, um, and then we kind of make them our own. And really, the purpose of that for us is their song studies. You know, if you want to write good songs, you got to study good songs. So yeah. um, we're, we're not the kind of band who hears a song and says, oh, let's write a song like that. It doesn't really work like that for us. But when we start writing a riff, when a riff comes to us or a song idea comes to us, immediately we think about, you know, two or three songs that it reminds us of and go listen to them loud and try to see if there's anything in there that we can, you know, incorporate into ours or anything we can use for inspiration or, or make, you know, or spin off of. And I think, what the goal with that is that we write songs that feel like the classic rock songs we grew up listening to, man. I mean, that's all we want to do. I don't, I don't want to take rock and roll into the future. I don't even know if such a thing can even be done. I just want to play it the way I learned it and yep. play songs that like, like the ones I love growing up and bringing mm -hmm. that feeling that I had the first time I, I heard who made who when I was three years old, and my little bird got hard, mm -hmm. you know, trying to bring that feeling <laughs> to new audience, you know? Yeah. What else? I mean, even Beatles, you listen to the early Beatles stuff. It was all covers. You know what I mean? Like it's, that's, you know, that's how bands start out. You know I mean? It's, it's cool. But yeah, man. I, I can't wait to, I can't wait to hear the new records or um, release date or, no, we're still in the process of uh, finishing up the recording. It's been it's been a long process, um, just because of 
well, we haven't been touring much, so money has been a factor and it's an expensive record for us. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, and then the other thing is, is uh, we, we want to have time to season the songs. You know, we felt, we felt like uh, in, with our past recordings, we just kind of rushed or put it together in a way that we felt, you know, w- was the best in the moment and wasn't really time tested. And so, you know, we, we figured out our songs that, that, that would wind up being the best are the ones that we get some laps under the belt with and play them live and kind of help them, you know, make them more real rather than just, you know, being an abstract idea that we hadn't played in front of anybody yet and going into the studio and recording it. You don't really know if it's going to pass or fail. You got to guess on that shit. You don't know, you know, if it's going to bore people or what. It's always better to play it first a couple of times. Um and so you can see how the room reacts to it and see if there are anything maybe you can do to make it a little stronger or, or, or whatnot, you know? So how did you end up um, doing the record in Grove City? One more time. That, um, you said you're recording in Grove City, right? Right. Uh, like we, had a connection, we, had, we had a connection with uh, uh, Marty McCoy from Boba Flex and the Lonely oh. Ones. Uh, he's, we, we actually, Prowess's first tour, um, we supported them. Um, it was that the, the, pretty sure it was that lineup you got on your shirt there. We, we toured with Boba Flex for, and they, they dug us uh, different kind of stuff than they do more classic versus they're a little bit more modern, you know, mm-hmm. more, you know, drop tunings and, and uh, you know, more high gain amps and stuff. Um, but he, he does his recording at, at Sonic Lounge in Grove City with a guy named Joe Veers, who does a lot of. He actually recorded uh, Black Coffee's debut song, uh, the one that got them the got got them signed. And uh, we love the room. Um, we love how we sound in there. And uh, we just we just we, we tried out several different rooms. We actually recorded two of these songs um, in just outside of. Uh, Atlanta, Georgia, at uh, Jesse Dupree's it's a, it's Jesse Dupree's studio. It's in his backyard. Um, uh, Jesse Dupree from Jackal. Um, mm-hmm. We had a connection there and went down to that room and had a uh, produce uh, sound engineer there uh, in Jeff Tamai, which he's got some credits and stuff. Uh, it just didn't turn out exactly how we wanted it. It was on our end. It wasn't on their end. It was uh, we just didn't have the songs completely ready to go and. Uh, you know, just to, tried to hammer them into into finished product, but they just weren't there yet. Um, we recorded at another place in Atlanta as well, the same place we recorded Blacktop Therapy. It didn't work there either. So uh, Sonic Lounge is a, is the third room we've been into, and uh, now we're now we got it. Third time is a charm here, and uh, so we're looking forward to getting it all locked up, and then getting it out for mixing and it's going to be it'll be in the shoot for a little while because we've got to put some promotion behind it so it's still a good long way out but we'll be able to put out a couple of singles and a couple of good videos for it uh you know to to amp up the energy whenever the time comes and uh so when does this when does this uh interview air because i may be able to share some news with you um well i can um add it and put it on tonight right yeah, i mean um, we're we are uh, we're not allowed to officially announce until tomorrow. Um, okay, so we, I can I can wait. Cool. Yeah, I'll wait. We just got selected as a uh, as a finalist for the Kiss Cruise. Um, so you know, there's a like a they do they do a uh, the members of the the people on the on that paid for tickets for the cruise um, will actually select the bands that'll play on the Kiss Cruise, and of course my my. Uh, my singer's favorite band is Kiss. My favorite band is ACDC, mm-hmm. um, but his favorite band is Kiss. And so we, you know, he's he's just chomping at the bit to, you know, to be able to get on the on the boat and play with Kiss. You know, to ride the, you know, on a cruise ship. Me, I just want a trip to the fucking Bahamas, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that would be, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if we're playing at nine thirty in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Um. I won't release this till tomorrow, so um, you're you're good. I don't I don't want you getting any trouble. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I mean, we'll what, if, if you want to um, if you want to come back on and promote your record when it comes out, or when you guys go on the road or whatever, I mean, like, yeah, hit us up. Like, I'm friends with you on Facebook. 
I don't know if you even knew that, you know, but um, yeah, you can yeah, come back on. I, I didn't, man. I, I I barely I barely mess around on Facebook anymore these days, man. Yeah, uh, just just you know, for for whatever reason, it just it just quit working for me. You know, I I do it for the promote. You know, I promote on it and yeah. And stuff. I don't really hang out on there that much anymore. Um, but you know, it's if you if you shoot me a message, man, I'll I'll catch you there. You know, if we're friends. Um, but yeah, um, what was I gonna say? We were talking about something though. Um, oh yeah, the doing a coming back on whenever a record comes out. I'd, I'd love to do that, man. That'd be super yeah, cool. I'll bring awesome. more. To, you know, I can bring a. We can do it at. At rehearsal or something, I can get the whole band on this. On oh, the, on that'd be oh, awesome! Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that'd be awesome. When you start touring in Columbus or anything, um, let us know and we'll, we'll go to the show. And we oh, yeah, for sure. Arrive. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, we'll definitely let y'all know. And uh, and we got a got an in in a couple of pretty pretty big rooms there now. So, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully. We'll be playing someplace where there ain't a tree in the middle of the damn floor. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. Taking up all the space. Yeah, no doubt. And Shrunken Head was a cool spot, though. It was real. It was super cool, man. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it, it was weeknights, man, you know, so we want yeah, a smaller room. I know. Because we're playing in Columbus on weeknights. We don't want to put a – we don't want to put a, a, a brand-new band that hadn't been on the road much in a big room on a fucking Tuesday, it'll be empty, you know? Yeah, but I know. That, was, that place was cozy, man, and we had it jumping in there. Uh, you know, it's such, it's a small room, so, you know, 40 looks like 80, you know? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah for sure. All right, man, well, we're about to run out of time, but I appreciate you coming on, man. Thanks a lot. Absolutely, well, thank man. you. Thank you guys for having me. I had a good time. Thank you. All right, if, if um, anybody say have anything else to say, or no, I will... Um, if Prowls comes to your town, check them out, man. It's it's a fun show. If you like classic rock, you know, rock and roll, go check them out, man. Good All right. good music to play at a grill out, too. You know, I did that the other night. I played good music while I was growing out. It was awesome. Right on. That's cool, man. <laughs> Hope you didn't burn the steaks. <laughs> no, almost. Do you want to promote your therapy? It was awesome. You want to pro uh, promote your social media or anything? Yeah, uh, you can find us anywhere on social media uh, if you just use the uh, at Prowess Rocks. At Prowess Rocks will get you that'll get you on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, um, any anywhere you need to find us. Um, it's about to start picking up pretty heavy as we get ready to promote the upcoming album and the shows that we have coming up in the fall. I'm pretty sure we're going to be coming your way to see you guys sometime in in uh, early fall. For sure, yeah. Like yeah, um, let us know, like, email us or, you know, um, Facebook message. Let us know for sure, you know, when we're coming so we can we can be ready, you know. Because in case it's a work night, you know, get the night off. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You're going to need it because, uh, you know, we like, we like to punish the liver. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I work second shift. So, you know, it's not like I have to get up early, but, you know, but it'd be during my work schedule. So as long as I have enough notice, I can take the day off, man. So, but we'll definitely be there. Right on. Good to hear. All right, All right All guys. Right. Well, I, I appreciate you having us on, man. Uh, I'll, I'll catch up with y'all. Uh, you want to sign us out? Yep, that's our sign off. Five and out. All right. Thanks, All man. Right. Thanks no a lot. Problem. Um, oh, and I recognize that shirt. That's a that's a throwback shirt there. Yeah, that was the first time I seen you guys. Um, but I remember last time you were here, you were kind of telling me about your, your van getting stolen. Yep. Yeah, we uh, we we got kidnapped. The van got kidnapped one night on the road. Lovers were loading in in the back, and somebody uh, somebody hopped in the driver's seat and just took off down the road um it was a pretty wild night i think it's, i think it's got tens of thousands of views uh where we shot some uh footage from the aftermath of uh of getting in, getting the van back we pulled the dude over and pulled him out and you know it was a pretty wild dude was he drunk that's pretty messed up that they take your gear and everything in your van